Hi everyone, I am Leon Gondelman and this talk is about modular specification and verification of distributed causal memory. In a modern distributed storage system, all replicas must be both consistent and highly available. However, as CUP theorem states, when the network is partitioned, to stay operational the database cannot maintain both availability and strong consistency of partitioned replicas. One solution to enforce all of three aforementioned properties is to consider weaker notions of consistency. Among those solutions, one popular choice is causal consistency. <clears throat> In a causally consistent distributed database, if a replica i observes an update originating from the replica j, then it must also have observed all the updates that took place on the replica j before that update. For instance, imagine that initially keys x and y contain no data, and then the replica i writes 37 to x and 1 to y. If the replica j reads 1 from y, in virtue of causal consistency, it must necessarily read 37 from x. Note that causal consistency is a transitive relation. If replica j writes 1 to y after observing an update to x originating from replica i, then if a third replica, replica k, reads 1 from y, it must necessarily observe itself the i's replicas update to x. Programming distributed systems is challenging and error prone. In this work, we specified and verified the implementation and the clients of distributed causal memory. Our development is built in Cockproof Assistant on top of Aneris, a framework for a node local reasoning about ML implementations of distributed systems. And in this talk, I'll give a brief overview of some of key aspects of our work. Let's start with implementation, which will provide us an insight of what was the challenge. We implemented causal memory as a distributed database in an array slang, a deeply embedded ML-like language that features concurrency and network socket primitives. Our implementation follows the original pseudocode from a seminal paper of Ahmad and others, and it works as follows. When the client initializes the ith replica, read and write operations are returned to the client. In the same time, init internally allocates on its local heap data such as key value store, vector clock, uh, lock and a socket. It also spawns three concurrently running threads, apply, send and receive. Using these threads, causal consistency is enforced via message passing communication between replicas. It relies crucially on each replica having a vector clock, which tracks both the number of updates performed by the replica itself, as well as the number of updates synchronized with each of all other replicas. When the client writes data to the replica i, the replica performs the update locally, increments the ith component of its vector clock, and broadcasts the update message to other replicas. Along with the key, value, and the origin of the update, this message contains the value of the replica's vector clock. When this update is received on replica j, the apply function compares the received vector clock with its own clock. The causality check consists of two conditions. Firstly, for any component p different from i, the value of the received vector clock must be not greater than the value of the local clock of the replica j. That ensures that all causal dependencies of the update has been already locally applied on replica j. Secondly, the, uh, for the ice component of the vector clock, the value of the received vector clock must be just one ahead with respect to the local clock. That ensures that this update is the only update from replica i that replica j didn't yet observe. Thus, if these two conditions are satisfied, the replica j updates the local store and the vector clock accordingly. Now, from the client's perspective, the IPA of the replica consists just of init, write, and read operations. The internal state and the synchronization mechanisms are entirely hidden from the client. In this work, we, we wanted not just formally verify the implementation of causal memory, but also to reason about the clients and even build verified libraries that are using it. To do so, we had to find out how to give the API specifications that are abstract enough to hide implementation details, yet expressive enough to enforce causal guarantees of the client's code. To achieve this, our specifications are built on top of a mathematical model of causal memory in which we treat causality at appropriate level of abstraction. 
A central idea of this model is to track histories of updates in two different ways. Firstly, for each replica, we track a local history of all memory updates that the replica has observed so far. It includes both local write operations and updates due to synchronization with other replicas. Concretely, the elements of a local history are what we call apply events, which are five tuples consisting of key, value, time, and the origin of the update, plus fifth component, which I'll explain in a second. The other way we track the history of updates is an abstract global memory that for each key keeps track of all the updates to that key by any replica of the system. We call the elements of the global memory write events, where each write event consists of a key, value time, and the origin of the update. You may have noticed that there is a strong similarity between the shape of broadcast messages in the implementation and the way we define events in the model. However, there are two important differences between those two objects. Firstly, the broadcast messages contain vector clocks, whereas apply and write events are using an abstract logical notion of time. This time comes with a partial and strict order relations, which allow us to compare events in various ways. For instance, if time of event E1 is smaller than the time of event E2, it means that the event E1 happened before E2, and so E2 must be causally dependent on E1. Conversely, if the logical time of E1 and E2 is incomparable, that means that those events are not necessarily happened one before another, and so they are causally independent. It is also useful to define distinguished elements of a given set of events, such as maximal elements which describe the subset of all causally independent elements of a given set of maximum time, or the maximum element of a given set, if such exists. The second difference concerns apply events, each of whom contains what we call a sequence number. The purpose of this number is to describe the order in which updates are applied locally. To see why this is useful, suppose that the local history SI contains just two incomparable events, A1 and A2. While these two events are causally independent, they are still applied locally in some specific order. We can therefore define a function called observe that gives the latest applied update of the local history. Of course, just keeping track of updates is not enough. We also need to ensure that local histories are valid with respect to the abstract global memory and also with respect to the local physical state of the corresponding replica. However, as the local state is hidden from the client, we can treat those two requirements separately, focusing for the client reasoning on validity between local history and global memory. Concretely, we introduce a notion of a global state that ties together the abstract global memory and all local histories. We also introduce an abstract validity predicate uh, on global states. The key point here is that the validity of a given state implies that their state has some important properties. For instance, in a valid state, each memory update is uniquely determined by the time at which it has been executed on the replica of its origin. In the same time, in a valid state, each local memory update must be caused by some write event occurred somewhere in the database. Conversely, each write event must have been applied at least locally on the replica of its origin. Most importantly, our model allows us to express causal consistency in simple terms as the following validity property. For a given key k and a write event w related to that key, if the local history si contains an apply event a such that event w happened before a according to the logical time, then the local history si must contain as well and apply event A prime that corresponds exactly to the right event W. And this formal statement, uh, this property, implies the informal meaning uh, of causal consistency that we gave in the beginning. Now, the model alone is not enough to reason modularly about the implementation and clients of the database. It is building logical specifications on top of that model that enables such a modular reasoning. We embed our model into an distributed separation logic. In this logic, 
uh, you can reason about programs using quadruples. And as any separation logic, an array allows heap local reasoning using points to connectives and separation star. As an array is built on top of iris, uh, an array also allows us to reason about concurrency in a straight local way. This is, for instance, useful to reason about uh, implementation grants, uh, where three concurrent running threads are uh, running simultaneously with read and write operations. Uh, Anaris logic takes furthermore local reasoning one step further, as it allows to reason about distributed programs in a node local way. Now, in our embedding of the model, Local history, global memory, validity, and validity properties are all turned into separation logic abstract predicates. Let's take a closer look on how this is done. We encode local history as a scene predicate that describes a partial knowledge of the local history S of the replica I. This predicate describes only partial knowledge about the local history, because client's knowledge about local history cannot be precise. The reason for this is that the apply function is indeed running concurrently with client's requests. Client's knowledge about global memory at a given key k on the country can be precise. We encode this knowledge as a points to connective k points to h, where h describes a set of write events to that uh, related to that key. Client's knowledge about global memory at a given key k can be precise because either the client knows that she is the only one to modify the memory of that key, or because she shares this ability to make an update to key k with other clients, in which case all clients must use the ownership resource according to some agreed protocol that has to hold before and after each update to that key. Now with this predicate, we can finally state the specifications for read and write. Let's do this. For read operation, assume, we assume that the client has observed a subset S of the local history of replica I. Then, after execution, the client gets back scene predicate for some S prime bigger than S. The set S prime can be bigger because during the execution of the read operation, some apply events may have happened in parallel to the read. Now. The read uh, k operation either returns none or some v for some value v. If read returns none, it means that the local memory does not contain any value for the key k. Therefore, the local history as prime restricted to the key k must be also an empty set. Otherwise, if some value v is returned, the local memory for the key k must contain the value v. This can happen only if the local memory of the replica at that key has been uh, uh, indeed updated, and the latest update for that key has written the value v. Consequently, the local history S' prime must have recorded this update at the latest apply event A for the key k. In other words, observe of S' prime restricted to key k is equal to A. You may wonder why A is actually not the maximum element of S' prime, but a maximal one. To see why, suppose that just before the read operation was executed, two externally uh, causally unrelated writes have been applied locally on replica i. Naturally, one of two writes must have been applied before the other, and the latest observed apply event must correspond to the subsequent update. However, as the apply operation is hidden from the client, there is no way the client could know and observe which of those two writes is actually the latest. Consequently, all that the client can know is that A is among the maximal elements of the local history for the key K. Let's now turn to write specification. For a write specification, the post condition ensures that, the, that after execution of write, the client gets back the scene predicate with updated local history, just as with read, and it also gets back an ownership uh, of the updated memory over the key k. Now k is pointing to uh, the disjoint union of a, h and uh, erasure of a. Here, uh, events a and uh, erasure of a describe respectively the apply and write events that model the effect of the write operation in the local history and global memory. Contrary to the read operation, the post condition of write states that 
um, A is now the maximum element of the updated local history. This matches the intuition that the update is causally dependent on any other apply event previously observed on the replica I. While, I, uh, while a, uh, apply event A is uh, the maximum apply event of the updated local history, its erasure uh, is only guaranteed to be among the maximal write events of the updated memory. Intuitively, this is because there can be other write events in the memory H performed by other replicas that we have not yet locally observed. As those events are not observed on replica I, the newly added write event does not causally depend on them and hence does not have a strictly greater time. Okay, so while this specification captures the essence of the right operation behavior, there is one subtle question uh, regarding it. The problem is that this specification is too weak to reason about racing accesses to the same key. Indeed, uh, to reason about uh, races in Iris, one has to use invariance. However, invariance in Iris give the ownership only for an atomic operation, after which the ownership must be given back to the invariant. But the problem is that the right operation is not an atomic one. To solve this problem, we have designed a stronger, but a more complex rule that handles concurrent accesses to the same key. This rule also allows us to derive the weaker rule that I just presented. Our solution relies on a technique called the hookup higher order concurrent abstract predicate. You can find uh, more information about hookup style write rule in the paper. And in this talk, I'll just conclude now with a couple of words about the specification, about the verification, sorry. So, verification. Using our specifications and the laws capturing validity properties, we verified small yet subtle examples involving concurrently running clients. Additionally, we built a verified session manager library that allows, allows us to reason about session guarantees of the client's code running on separate nodes from the database replicas. Finally, we also have verified <coughs> the implementation. Net required actually uh, to define validity predicate between physical state and the local history and finding out a good definition of this validity predicate was actually quite subtle. It also required to give concrete meaning to all abstract predicates that we have defined so far, uh, which was a non-trivial proof engineering task in IRIS. If you found this work interesting, please read our paper or just ask a question. Thank you very much.